Hello, welcome to today's ecology class. We're still in a behavior uh, part and the next two presentations we will talk about migrational patterns in animals, their habits and how they do it. So we can start migrational animals. There are a few main questions we should think about when when talking about migration. So for the start, what migration actually is. It is hard to define migration because different scientists involved with different animal taxa had different idea on what migration actually is. The, the broadest description would be that it is a process of movement from one place to another. But it's too wide. The, the most reasonable, at least by me, would be from a certain Thompson scientist who said that the true migration is changes of habitat periodically recurring and alternating in direction which tend to secure optimum environmental conditions at all times. So to answer the next question or why do animals move that is something we can define with certainty. The reasons could be different but all of them for sure fits in one of these three reasons. So animals by migration are pursuing the need for food shelter or mate. The reason could be different but all of them for sure fits in one of these three reasons. So migration happen triggered by something usually some kind of change in environment like weather or climate, does food availability or, or mating season period. Simply we could say that migrations are usually seasonal and related to animals need to feed and reproduce. Now about the question which of the animals migrate. Uh, most known taxa of migration animals are definitely birds. They are the ones in which case scientists firstly start thinking about what do they do in winter time when they are not at the place they usually live during summer and their migration was most visible. The truth is more complex. Namely, migration is nearly universal within the animal kingdom. In fact, all major gr animal groups, including birds or mammals, fish, reptiles, amphibians, and insects and crustaceans migrate. And in the next presentation, we will talk more in detail about every taxa's migrational habits. Yet, here we run into the previously mentioned disagreement about the migration definition. Example would be uh, the urinal vertical migration of plankton is it a migration or at night migration of parasitic worm from depth to surface layers of skin should these be considered as migration but one is the clear example of a migration of a north american bird which is seasonal in north america 500 out of altogether 650 species known in north america migrate Different birds have different breeding locations and migration paths. Roses geese, for example, breed in the Arctic and then migrate south through Canada and to the U United States. There they return southwest to winter in California and like other birds they fly with the, with that turn southeast towards the Gulf Coast. On the other hand, Scarlet Danger's migrate range stretches from United States to South America and after breeding in various parts of the United States they fly south uh, in the fall. This is a geese, this is tangers, scarlet tangers and you can see here their breeding sites between um, breeding range and winter range and the same, uh, same happens here for the geese. So this, as mentioned before, birds are one really clear example of what migration could be but then for the other taxa, there are certain disagreements about the definition of migration. What is apparent from all these organisms is that no matter how undramatic or dramatic migrations may be, they involve specialized behavior. This behavior differs from locomotory behavior occurring during the course of other life history events. Uh, from this, we can apply this sort of a definition that migration is specialized behavior especially involved for dis displacement of the individual in space. This is one more field in which natural selection can act. 
So like colorful feathers or big fangs mentioned in, in sexual selection in previous presentations. Migrations help animals survive and they are a type of adaptation on change in the environment. This is which would be a descriptive definition of a migration itself. Migrants often return to breed in the exact location where they were hatched or born. So called homing or the ability to do that, to return into your place of birth. Uh, experiments try to, to demonstrate this ability, the ability of animals to orientate themselves geographically. And such experiments involve removing animals from a specific point and transporting them for various distances and then analyze their speed and degree of success to return to the hatching location or, or place of birth. For an example, a Manx Sherwater, you can see on this picture, it, it was able to return from Massachusetts to Britain and it was around 5,000 kilometers apart across the Atlantic within 12 and a half days. Amazing ability. There are many other cases, this was just an, a random example. But it it is apparent that homing animals use familiar landmarks, both random and oriented. So landmarks vary from topographical, for example, mountain system, river system, coastlines and so on, all the way to ecological, like uh, vegetation zone, zones or climatic, so air mass differences in temperature, humidity, prevailing winds and, and so on. Familiar landmarks and explorations do not, however, explain how migrant migrants find their way along routes covering many hundreds of thousands of kilometers, nor do the results of most homing experiments. So, main orientations, that's what at least we concluded, animals are using are celestial bearings, the sun position, or magnetic field which is believed to be um, present in, in, in birds orientation mostly prevailing. Psychological stimulus for migration is really complex. The thing we should take into consideration is that migration as a process within the life of a, of a migrant species is part of a life cycle, cycle and depends on, on complex internal rhythms that affect the whole organ particularly the endocrine glands and, and the gonads. There is no relationship between the reproductive and migratory stimuli, yet these two phenomena, although independent, are nevertheless stimulated by the same factors. A physiological study of certain migrants have revealed that metabolic patterns usually change prior to migration and fats accumulate in the body tissue. Food consumption increases with the autumn molt, reaching a peak at the beginning of the migration season. These fundamental physiological changes, uh, chiefly under the control of thyroid glands, are correlated within migratory activity. Uh, such fluctuations are not observed in non-migratory species, so they are a specific migratory adapted behavior. Also, gonadal development, of course, responsible for sexual reproduction, as we said, these two are not closely connected, but they are dependent on them and the same things. These gonadal development and the position of fat are, are influenced by the pituitary gland, which reacts on, on daylight length in springtime, by accelerating the, the rate of gonadal development. Uh, the pituitary gland thus governs the development of gonads and in addition affects all metabolic processes including development of the thyroid gland so as to prepare the animal physiological needs for, for migration. The, the proper ecological conditions are necessary to initiate it. The availability of food is an important factor. Also temperature and weather conditions have an influence. For example, a sudden period of cold weather during autumn may influence the immediate departure of, of many migrants. And the, this is one of the ways how animals 
are affected by these global changes because it is changing their their patterns of migration dependent on time and temperatures um, for example whales are getting skinnier because they have less time to feed and they have to travel long distances to reach the cold water since the the hot belt of climate in on the earth got wider and the cold areas are getting smaller all of these studies <coughs> about the physiological processes even though I mentioned whales most of these studies are done on birds so their pre-migration physiological modifications are most known but it is believed that similar changes occur in the other taxa especially um, warm-blooded species the origins of migration remain in the realm of pure conjecture neither observer neither observation or experiment has resolved the matter the explanation however must be related to geographical and climatological factors that have prevailed since the neogene period the the, the great quaternary ice ages which came later were very important in alternating this distribution of animals over a large part of the world but migrations occur long before them migration as it is known now among modern birds and mammals probably appeared gradually by stages some animals changed their habit or only slightly never leaving the same general region the movement of other animals were more erratic their dispersal being oriented toward the most favorable places and such movements are the first sta stages of the true migration a phenomenon characterized by elaborate mechanisms which gradually occur the stability through, through natural selection so at first many populations must have perished rather than attempt to flee from unfavorable conditions but only a friction of such populations probably sought more favorable conditions elsewhere but natural selection favored the migrants and the migratory tendencies were were retained because obviously it turned out to be efficient and useful of course in a matter of survival and uh, uh, gene flow to the next generations there are many ecological implications of migrations of course we since it was kept in animal kingdom it must be that it was useful and full of benefits one of it could be the food resource of some regions wouldn't be adequately exploited without moving populations migratory species tend to use for their migration needs the places which change in productivity for example, savanna, it is used uh, in the moment of a highest production, opposite to the rainforest, which has constant re production rates, so no maximum time of reproduction and no the best way to use it. The reproduction is constant, so uh, none of the species is using that area for their migration path or site, but it has um, common habitants living in that area and that's it second that migration enables fast-moving animals to exploit fluctuating resources and also to settle in the areas where life would not be tenable for animals incapable of rapid travel on the other hand peaks of food production would be unexploited without the periodic presence of migratory population thus basically migration's philosophy is use the most of everything you can get your hands on or pause so if you are able to use everything that is given to you use it and you will survive and your genes will be preferred because you're fit enough to get as much as possible out of your surrounding and then move forward and use another surrounding and all its properties and so on so the, the more you're fit the more incomes you will get biological dispersal is one more thing that is related to migration sometimes it's used as the synonym 
but I, I believe that it actually difference is that in biological dispersal uh, next to willing movements like like migratory animal species we're also uh, including these so-called unwilling movements or for example you can see pictures here plant species like dandelion or, or boar which as any other animal are just have this physical mechanical ability to move from one space to another but it's not like they are they decided in this moment it's a good time to do it it's just a physiological process that prepared them to move but also the uh, important thing to mention is that uh, natural selection played a role here so at one, some point somebody some of the species moved and their genes were kept and fi favored by nature so the idea of movement for for plants continued and still is present uh, also on this tiny map you can see a picture of Atlantic carrying a lot of all these parcels which are moved by the current and the waves so they are animals but still they're not in a position to decide about their path or or their target of their movement but they are being gone with the wind so they're taken with their surrounding to some location uh, which they are not able to decide upon. There are three stages which we include in this dispersal, it's departure, transfer and settlement uh, not regarding of, of a type of the organism we're talking about and altogether there are a number of benefits to dispersal such as locating new resources, escaping unfavorable conditions, avoiding competing with siblings and also avoiding breeding with close relatives, individuals which could lead to so-called inbreeding depression so it is healthy for gene flow for organisms to move around to mix with other populations and that is why it is favorable by natural selection the one mechanism that played a huge role in this stage of animal behavioral adaptations to the environment so we'll continue this story in the next presentations talking about each animal taxa separately thanks for watching and talk to you soon bye